Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm sharing with you my latest painting called Transformation. It was at the beginning, it was a failure and you can see that I'm overpainting it. But I got this idea as um, I've been studying a lot of uh, ancient teachings about um, the philosophy behind transformation. And we can find so many symbolism when it comes to change, when it comes to transformation, when it comes to evolution, growth, expansion, and overall reaching the highest potential of something that we decide to change, that we decide to transform. And I've put some of the symbolisms into this painting and Eventually you will see the sketch of the roots, you will see the upper part of the body as more realistic tree, you will see a sand watch, you will see a part of gold, you can see an old paper, you can see a symbol of the moon and the sun. So the basic message that came with the painting after I finished it uh, is that um, this painting is a symbolic demonstration of transformation. The sketched roots of a tree transform into its realistic body, symbolizing the process of growth and change. The sun and moon are also depicted representing the masculine and feminine aspects of order and disorder that are both necessary for transformation to occur. In the bottom left corner, there is a sand hourglass that represents the element of time and you can you will see at the end that it is perfectly balanced so both upper and lower glasses have the same amount of sand which means that um, things work best when they are in balance and it's a symbol of time which is essential for change in the bottom right corner, there is a gold, which in alchemy represents the highest potential of metal. The purpose of transformation then is to find the highest potential of ourselves through trial of errors and virtuous acts of courage, wisdom, moderation and justice. This painting serves as a reminder that transformation is a necessary and ongoing process in our lives. So this is the basic message of this painting and I want to talk a little bit about that because we all know that it's much easier to say those things, it's much easier to use some kind pleasant words and talk about change but when it comes to personal lives, when it comes to our trials of errors and noticing how often we try something new and we fail and noticing how much of willpower it takes to actually get ourselves up when we feel lazy and overcome maybe a depression for somebody or maybe a certain sensation of sadness or anger or envy or anything that may be holding us in that bubble of negativity, of darkness it's not so easy to get out of it, right? But at the same time, we need to ask ourselves, is there a potential for change? Is there a potential to experience more joy in my life? Is there a potential to do something that can produce an effect of happiness for myself? Is there a potential for it? Has anyone done it before? Do I know someone who's happier than me? Do I know someone who's more creative than me or more joyful than me? Do I know someone who's overcame a depression? Do I know someone who's more athletic than me? Do I know someone who is already where I want to be? Because that's the beginning, that's the start, right? When you plant a tree, it has great examples around it in the forest. So it knows what, it, what is its potential, right? But when we go into society, sometimes it's hard to find examples. Like, this is something I could uh, learn from, you know. Most people are scrolling on the phones, looking downwards. Some people don't even say hi. 
right? And then we're looking for examples like how to be happier. We don't know where to go. So we need to find certain examples that can, ex that can actually show us a possibility. So you need to remind yourself, well, if you want to do something that's kind of uncommon in society, you need to find uncommon people and study them. That will be the easiest way to transform your life. And once you find them, you will notice uncommon people are doing uncommon things. That's what makes them uncommon. Right? And then you ask yourself, well, I'm not doing most of those uncommon things. And that's why my life is not where I want it to be. And if you study how they are dealing with their emotions, how they are shifting their mindset, how they are adapting their habits, their daily habits, to their vision of the future, you will notice that there's a certain amount of discipline required to make things happen, right? A certain amount of discipline is required. And sometimes people are afraid of the discipline because it's not easy and we can recognize that we're living in a society where people are trained to only do easy things when something is hard they close themselves down but it's not how you want to live you want to challenge yourself you've most probably noticed that there was a period of your life where you will where you were more sad or you were depressed but then somebody called you to go somewhere, maybe for a trip, or maybe to visit a certain place in nature, and you were like, I, I don't have time, I don't want to do, but that person was persistent. And then you went, and you've experienced a shift. You were like, oh, I'm so grateful that you took me. I'm so happy, oh, oh this is so incredible. Have you experienced that before? That's how uh, some practical psychologists um, call that uh, the shift in biology. When you actually do something you don't want to do, and you do it with a certain amount of, um, of courage, like you trust that it will work, even though you may feel like a sense of resentment, you may feel like pushed back a little bit. You need to have some faith into possibility that there is a greater level of joy for you but only when you start walking towards it i've learned in my life that uh, to transform our lives into a greater version we can be requires a great amount of awareness a great amount of awareness of our our daily behaviors our daily thoughts the words we are using, emotions, and overall, how well can we keep balance in our lives? Because there are phases, cycles of nature where we feel more motivated, more inspired. And then there are cycles where we feel less motivated, less inspired, and we want to rest a bit more. We need to remind ourselves that it's okay to rest. It's okay to feel that way. We are only trained to think that it's good when you're on high level of energy. But when you're on low level of energy, it's something bad. Something you should be afraid of. So people are afraid of losing the momentum. But if you look at your phone, when you recharge it, it has a full battery. But if you're using it constantly, the battery will fall down. It will drain itself. And eventually, if you take, don't take care of it, your phone will die. It will go to sleep, right? And you need to look at yourself the same way. If you're constantly using your body, using your mind, feeling all kinds of different emotions and sensations, your energy is falling down. Your battery is draining out, right? So we need to get a certain sense of awareness, to recognize what is that limit to which you're willing to drain your energy until you want to recharge yourself, until you want to take a break so you can set boundaries in your life. Like, this is how much I'm willing to do, but then I need to recharge. 
and you need to know what is recharging you, right? For me, it's nature. It's uh, doing any activity in nature. I go outside and I, I immediately feel better. I love visit new places in nature. I'm coming from extreme sports, from mountain biking, so this is just something that recharges me. It doesn't matter how busy my life is or how heavy my life is. If I go into the forest on my mountain bike, it will recharge me. But then there are certain phases in our lives where we are also physically drained out, not just mentally and emotionally, but also physically. And those are the times when we need other types of um, activities or um, certain things that can help us to recharge our batteries, like um, doing some yoga, meditation, going on a massage, going into a sauna, or, or doing certain retreat that helps you to recharge your physical body. That's how you balance the chemistry within your body, right? Neuroscientists will tell you that if your levels of dopamine and serotonin are below the kind of normal level, you will feel more negative, more depressed, and more exhausted. And the reason that the levels of dopamine and serotonin are below the certain kind of normal level may be that uh, you're constantly doing too much of easy things, constantly seeking short satisfaction, like eating too much of sugar, scrolling on your phone all day long, um, not taking care of your responsibilities, not doing anything hard. You've trained yourself to constantly be fitted with short-term satisfaction. So you've trained your brain to get into... Uh, um, that kind of a depressed state because you're a complex animal your body is a complex animal made to do big things complex things hard things heavy things not just easy stuff so if you want to transform yourself and move from a certain state of sadness you need to break this bubble and do something hard as well and if you're saying well I'm physically tired, do something that will recharge you, take care of your sleeping cycle, do some yoga, like I said, some meditation, go on massage once a month or whatever you prefer. But if that is working out and you still feel that way, you need to also do something hard. Make sure that you have a certain routine of working out. Think about how you were when you were a little kid, you were jumping around right? You've been joyful about all kinds of things. That inner child is still within you. And re it requires to be freed from the cage. That's why when we do a certain good sport, we feel like we freed the animal out of the cage. That's how I feel when I go out on my bike, like, oh, I f I'm freeing myself. And that's what I've learned about transformation for myself. And it's not easy, especially at the beginning, to notice where is that middle point of hard work and playfulness, of healing and moving on, of laughing and crying, of pushing through and being gentle, of socializing and solitude, of internal spiritual work and external physical responsibilities. It's not easy to find that middle spot, spot, but through all the tri trials of errors and failing and doing mistakes, we eventually find it. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fall down. Don't, don't be scared to lose the momentum. You will lose it and it's all a part of growth. So when you will lose it, maybe get back to this video. And it will remind you that actually it's a part of your progress that you're making. You are a work in progress and it's a part of this process. So my friends, I hope you found something valuable here. And I want to remind you if you found this painting inspiring today, 
you can find prints of it in our Etsy shop. I draw my passion. The link is in the description. Go there and check it out. You can find all kinds of different inspiring paintings. So check it out and stay beautiful, stay creative. One love.